Welcome, good morning, this is Doug, and I'm with one of my customers, and we are reviewing some of the characteristics of cloud services, namely storing files online, what type of online storage to use, in particular Office 365, with the business capabilities and the consumer capabilities, comparing the features and the benefits, the advantages and the disadvantages, and the capabilities of those two principal products, cloud services. So thanks for joining us today. It's really great to have you, and let's begin. So I, I'm showing a, uh, uh, a, a Chrome browser, and when you open up the browser in the beginning, you're, you're going to want to log in. And so at this stage, um, it's a, um, we're, we're going to log in with OneDrive. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type in OneDrive, okay? Okay. OneDrive.com. So this is this is the uh, product that Microsoft is giving consumers, and it you'll notice right off the bat, 15 gigabytes of of, of storage in the cloud, free. Okay, <laughs> uh, which is uh, an improvement. They keep, they keep giving us more space. Here's one place for your photos. Uh, so they want you to put your photos in there. One place for your documents. They want you to put your documents in there. Uh, one place for all the things that you would be sharing, whether it's um, you know with your friends and family or whomever. Uh, re remembering that this is a consumer product. OneDrive for everything in your life. Photos, videos, documents, files. Um, and there's 15 gigabytes of, of, of free stuff there, okay? So uh, that was, okay, so that's, you, you and you could download it. A, a, an app for that too. Now let's go to the plan. So we're in this page comparing the consumer OneDrive product with the OneDrive for Business product, and they're both laid out here in terms of the, uh, the economics. For example, uh, 15 gigabytes heat on one plan and one terabyte on the other plan. Online storage for personal files free. Uh, you can get eight, up to eight gigabytes for free. You can get an extra three storage when you activate your camera roll backup if you want to do something like that or refer a friend. The other thing you can do is if, you, if you're if you definitely going to use more, like 100 gigabytes, then they're going to charge you $2 a month for that. Um, and I was just, uh, I, I was pleasantly surprised recently because I'm already on a 100 gigabyte plan with a company called Dropbox and I'm paying more than $1.99. I'm actually pay paying $9.99, but I've been on that for a couple of years. So the direction is that these services are going down in price and they're giving you more storage for the same price. So those are good things for consumers um, overall. And, and so uh, there's so here's the features, uh, desktop synchronization, uh, mobile access, so you can use it on your iPhone or your Android, as well as Windows Phone. You can create and edit Office documents in a browser. You can do have built-in integration with Office in the desktop. So if you're running Office 365 or 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 the desktop apps, you can have that integration built in. Uh, namely, you can save it to the cloud and 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 synchronize. You can have co-authoring of Office documents in real time, which is collaboration. It can be good for you and your 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 partner there. Uh, automatic versioning of history of documents. So if you need to go back to a prior version because of the editing process, you want to go back to edit version number twelve, you can. And uh, then there's also for for uh, uh, controlling access and and setting up additional layers of security. Multi-factor authentication support is built into the free product as well as the, the business product. Uh, and then when you have the business product, you can also have auditing and reporting. You can have ad additional administration for granular control. Namely, you, could, uh, you can control access to a particular document, for example. Um, you can have single sign-on. That's what SSSO means. <clears throat> I think I put too many S's in there. ADFS is Active Directory uh, uh, Services. So you can have, um, you know, those are those are probably not going to be needed for small, mid-sized businesses so much. Uh, uh, but then there's also built-in standards compliance. So that would be applicable for uh, regulated industries like healthcare, uh, physicians, offices that have HIPAA 
and uh, a financial uh, fiduciary you know, regulated by the SEC or, or, or other uh, federal or state um, governing bodies. So you, you, you have those, you know, if you retail, for example, as PCI. So there's built in standards compliance for those types of things. That's what it is. Uh, so I'm going to go through the business on a different browser. Right now I'm on a Chrome browser, so we'll cover that one. And then if you want some support, okay, so how do you upload files, organize files? You, you can get support or how, how to uh, with uh, different things, right? So um, if, you, if you're using a Macintosh or you want to fetch files on your PC or you want to synchronize settings between PCs, uh, so all those questions can be addressed here plus more. I'm going to sign in to my uh, consumer OneDrive, okay? So this is this is what everyone have it on. So now I'm going to sign in to my OneDrive. And you, you would use your, um, if you have an old Hotmail address, that's going to work or live.com, okay? So this is, this was once known as the passport authentication that Microsoft had set up. Okay, so now I'm in OneDrive. This is a consumer app, and it's uh, one of the folders is called public. All the other ones that you see right here would not be visible if I, if you wanted to get my files, except this one that says public, and there's 11 files in there. This 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 is the uh, same as like the the tile schema that they have for the new operating system. Okay, okay. and so um, those are my public files, which are accessible theoretically to anyone on the internet if they wanted to see what Doug's got there. When we did that workshop last week and we had like 16 people in the room, after that, as a follow-up gesture, I offered these three. And furthermore, I offered a link to this page. It wasn't this ugly link with all these numbers and letters. Rather, it was a, a short form link. It was in that email that I sent as a follow-up to you. But okay. uh, if you would have clicked it you would have seen these three folders. One is called business, business continuity and productivity. One is called hands-on lab documents. And one is called industry solutions. And this tells you the number of files in each one of those segments, okay? So, and it, said, and it also gives you the, the, the permissions. This is all free. This is that OneDrive uh, consumer product. So for example, uh, what I included was two PDF documents. One is called Assess Your Technology. And the other one is called Microsoft Disaster Preparedness. It's a disaster preparedness guide. Okay, this is the this is this um, navigation feature up here is known as the cookie crumbs, right? It's kind of like Hansel and Gretel going through the forest. And okay, so I want to go back. Boom! I go to cloud. I just went up one level level in the, um, the hierarchy. Now I'm going to go to a different folder. It's called Industry Solutions, and these are all files that I made available to everyone in the workshop. Uh, business consulting links, cloud computing for legal. Uh, here's cloud computing for business consulting. Here's construction business links. Here's five things to look for in a cloud uh, vendor. Here's legal practice uh, links and templates. Here's medical practice links and templates. Here's Microsoft Cloud, healthcare, HIPAA security guidance, and cloud computing for construction, cloud computing guide for construction. Since you and I are focused on uh, legal, so this I'll show. I'll click on this one. Okay, now this okay. What, this was a uh, this was an, a text file. Okay, this was a Notepad file. I used this. You have that Notepad. Know, that's like the easiest thing there is. Exactly, and that's why I use it. The simple easy is something that I probably use more than anything else, Lisa. Anything else is this. I will type up here first. That's just as a matter of course for me because it strips out all the meta tags and the back uh, the back channel stuff that's going on, uh, which would go on if you're using words. But it's more important for, for me with the work that I do to have a clean set of text. And so simplicity, a lot of times I start here. And so these are, these the are links which normally. you normally bankruptcy court prefers things sometimes and 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 i can't remember what we notepad. called it note something notepad notepad yeah. the the creditor list in a bankruptcy um 
has to go in notepad. Right. And it's mostly oftentimes it's because they just they're doing copy paste, right? They're doing copy yeah. paste. And and they don't want all that uh, garbage code on the background. They just want to have the text. So this is so this is, you know, I, if you control click, see that little pop up menu that it's pretty hard to see. But um, yeah, I. <laughs> I'm normally good, but this is, you know, I, this is, I should actually make this even bigger because mine, okay, I can, mine is, I can see it, but not as well as I should. There, so I, I, see, I, I can make my make screen bigger. bigger. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. So thanks for asking. So these are, these are um, shortcuts that would take you to further resources for legal. Okay, so here's a video on legal that you and Vita can watch. Here's one called Legal Proposal Traditional Design. If you just want to have a design template. Okay, so these okay. are templates uh, and they come free from Microsoft Office. So you could uh, do a query on these if you wanted to look at here. Here's these are OneNote templates for legal trial notebook, legal client notebook. You might already have these, but I thought it'd be good to interesting. To put that in there. No, we don't. We kind of make, make we kind of tailor it. Well, a trial boat notebook is always tailored to the specific case. Right. So you could just do a new client. You could do a folder directory, just like I'm showing you here with these with these Chevron uh, ankles here. Uh, you could do a different folder for different clients. Each each client could have one, and these would be private folders, which I'll show. So I'm going back up one, back up. So I just showed. In, well, you know, those 10 files, I showed you one from that, okay? One which was this uh, legal practice templates text file. Three TXT, solutions, okay. Right, but there's also a cloud computing guide. This is a PDF for legal, right? So that's another one. Another thing that I probably, I think I did that. Yeah, see, it opens up a new tab. See that? And what I'm showing you here is that, um, that guide. This was a, a, a Word doc, and it's being rendered in the uh, Chrome browser as a word. So I could just read it here like this. I could download it as a PDF. I could print it, share it if I want to share it with someone and I could edit it in Word. As an Office 365 subscriber, you could just, uh, uh, you could uh, launch your Word, your native Word app like a you know, customary Word thing and uh, you could edit this document because it's a Word doc. But you don't have to. You can just view it and read it in a browser. And um, so here is another piece of guidance that might be useful as you're getting your uh, mind around what the no notion of cloud is, cloud computing guide for legal. Okay, so I put that in there for you uh, in this folder, this folder called Industry Solutions. Okay, okay. so that's, that's there. And then I also did the hands-on, this third folder here, the hands-on docs. So this was, you might re remember, this was what we used during the during the uh, workshop. I had this guidance set up for our schedule. <laughs> it's like try to keep uh, four people on track with going through the agenda. This was our agenda. So um, I don't know if you remember that. But, yes, uh, I do. And I remember you saying that the rest of us didn't get it, just the, <laughs> just the principal. <laughs> So this was my takeaways doc. So this was after the event. I used this, I sent this thing out, which basically was my minutes of our meeting, which just be, uh, re reiterated some of the um, use case scenarios and the lessons that we were covering and uh, you know what, what people were uh, learning when we went through those lessons on Windows 8 and Outlook and Exchange. And then when we went through this, uh, when, um, Ignacio and I were going through SharePoint, okay, and Outlook and Exchange, and then when uh, we when when Roger and I we went through the Excel stuff, and and then I had all those links, right? So here's the link to my BTP. Uh, here was a webinar that I did yesterday on CRM, but I've also made a couple of new ones uh, for CRM. I'm going to do a couple more webinars: one on August 14th and one on August 28th. Um, and so this is the summary of some of our stuff that I put together. Uh, so that was that was uh, the uh, hands-on way, hands-on lab customer takeaways. Uh, this was my famous uh, customer order, sales order, that I put put together. 
uh, with my offer. And then yeah. this this is further further follow up. Okay, so I did had uh, further next steps. And um, here's some here's a quick start guide for different applications, right? So supposing you want to get smart about Outlook, uh, this is a one pager or two pager that you could print out to uh, tape on your desk or on your wall next to your computer if you want to just get familiar with Outlook shortcuts and tips and tricks. Okay, and so. Um, uh, you know, here, you know, we covered a lot. There was a lot there. So this is a quick start guide on Outlook, right? So there's like, you know, seven different, eight different features that may expand your awareness of what setup would help out, including some shortcuts, right? Some work, work cases, mail, you know, mail and so on. Create an email signature, add a signature automatically to messages. Have a multiple signatures for different types of matters you know if, if I, I have multiple ones for you know consumer and and uh, does it automatically generate or well, what, where what, where you or it just says here you go pick a signature it would in the be program. It, it's actually going to be like I'll just, um it'll by default it'll always pick one signature right but right. you can change that on your outlook uh, you can look at the men on uh, the ribbon menu and you can uh, you can select one of the signatures right so if you're doing a new email I'll show you now so it's a little bit slow okay so here's here's the one that I've got set up as a default but if I don't okay. like if I don't like that one I can just see how many signatures I've got you can do you can go into signatures so you go right signatures so message ribbon signature and you can see I've got here's when I'm on a nonprofit 501c3 board, so I have I have a signature for that. Here's a one I called formal. Here's one for that business. Here's one for a reply. Here's one for you know really informal, right? So you can okay. you know, these are all pre prearranged, and there it's a drop down menu, right? So I can say I don't like this uh, formal one. I want my really informal one. And so you, so okay. you, you can uh, you can reuse those those signatures like so, and that's that's from Outlook Desktop. Okay. So going back to uh, going back to this cloud thing, uh, these files I made all these files available to everyone in our workshop. I also have this matrix that I put together for to try to make sense for what the offer was that I had on the table with Ignacio and Roger and Robert. And so uh, this is what I would like to talk with you when we when we speak next time is the different um, offerings that are available. And it's loading a little bit slowly. Uh, do, 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 do. <clears throat> so. Jeopardy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so here... Like here's PowerPoint quick start guide. I show I was showing you this one for Outlook. There's one for OneNote, Excel, Access, Project, PowerPoint, Publisher, Visio, Word. So there might be something there for Word. Okay, so this was my uh, suggestion. And the, and the notable thing that I did here was no out of pocket money. <laughs> Further suggestions for next steps, right? No out of pocket money. Uh, small out of pocket money, all in. So if you wanted to, to, to optimize your productivity, then look at this column of things. And uh, we're covering a lot of things right now in this webinar, what I put on this column. But uh, like including register, uh, open a free account with Microsoft OneDrive. That's, that's, that's what I'm showing you. All this is on now, OneDrive. I have a question. Yeah. So Office doesn't give me OneDrive. I need to register for the... I need to register for the free account with OneDrive. Yeah, you need to you need to sign up. And you may already have if you have a Hotmail uh, uh, email or if you have a OneDrive uh, if you have a live.com email or if you signed up with Passport, then you would use one what you already have that authenticates you with Microsoft so that they can then uh, put tether that existing one to your OneDrive account. Now, if you don't have a OneDrive if you don't have a Microsoft uh, Outlook, excuse me. If you don't, if you, if you don't have a Microsoft consumer account like Hotmail, then you just set one up. It's free, and then you can get the then you can become 
uh, you know, you can you can get that. You can get that uh, this service, this OneDrive. Okay. Okay. So so this is OneDrive. So I was I'm I was confused. I thought OneDrive came with Office 360, but obviously it, it, it's potentially thought, but confusing. Obviously it doesn't. I need to sign up for another. Okay, so it's potentially confusing because they're both called OneDrive. One's called OneDrive for business. Now, and, and everything I'm showing you so far has been in this Chrome browser. Okay, right. so I'm gonna close. I'm gonna minimize that. I'm gonna open up an Internet Explorer browser just to keep things separate. Okay. And now show you OneDrive Pro. Okay. So OneDrive Pro, whenever you, when it, this is this also called SharePoint. So with OneDrive Pro. It's you, called SharePoint? Yeah, also known as SharePoint. Yep. Yep. So that's the server behind this, behind this OneDrive Pro. So I'm I'm showing you I'm showing this is what you you would type in to log in. All right, it's called portal.microsoftonline.com. So that's what you type in to get logged in. Okay. Portal.microsoftonline. Yes. Dot com. And you're gonna see a you're gonna see this window here that says connect in different languages. Yes. Okay, so I'm going then then you you would see uh, your your email address as it's um, registered with with uh, Office 365 and in this sign in sign in window. So uh, I'm going to do I'm going to I'm going to log in on mine right now. Okay, and show you that's mine. And so I'm going to log in here. So now we're looking at my administrator's portal. And what I do is what I want to do is go to this Outlook. Okay, so now this is Office 365 Outlook web app. So I'm looking at my Outlook window from the standpoint of a browser, not from the Outlook app. Okay. okay. And... Um, there is Outlook Calendar. There's Outlook Contacts. They renamed that people. You can right-click on these menu items. See this right here? I'm going to right-click and then say open up a new tab. All right. So just as an FYI item, one thing that I like to do is make a clean Outlook interface. You know, the menu is still there, right? So I can still get all my stuff if I want to add toolbars, right? My favorites, maybe you, you, this this type of, you know, this type of information is still available if you want it, right? Your command bar, blah blah, all that. But my personal preference is to have a clean. So I I remove those tool tool toolbar items. Okay, so that's how you do that. You go into you, now what I'm doing is I'm hitting the Alt button on my keyboard, which toggles that menu on and off. Now the upshot for me is that I have more space to actually look at my at what I want to see on the page, and I'm not looking at all those junky menus on my browser. I like a clean browser. So that's that's Doug's okay. preference, personal preference. This little box is red right now next to my name. Sometimes they're green, sometimes they're yellow. It's red because I'm in a web meeting with you. So it tells the whole world that would be connected to me, all my coworkers, that I'm busy. I'm on a meeting now. All right. It would be if it was green, it would mean I'm I'm available. Um, oh, okay. So that's presence. That's real time and in indicator, and it permeates all the apps in Microsoft, as I'll we'll see when we look at some more of the stuff. So I'm gonna I'm gonna right click on. Uh, I right clicked on Newsfeed. I open up a, a tab there. Now I'm going to OneDrive and I'm going to open up another tab on OneDrive. Notice that it said briefly intentionally.sharepoint.com, right? Now I'm going to go to Sites. I'm going to open up Sites. 
intentionally dot dash my dot SharePoint. See that? Okay. And yeah. so, um, and then the administrators panel, I'm going to open up that. You probably have that one. And then, you know, you can see right here, if you want to log in, see here are the different, if it's green, that's I'm available, red, I'm busy. Red with a line through it means don't bother me. And then yellow might me means that I'll be right back or I don't want to appear like I'm online when I really am online. So you have always those uh, privacy designations. And then you can sign out, right? So that you can you can sign out if you have multiple mailboxes, you can open up another mailbox. And that that comes from this drop down where, where, where your name is. Then then there's also a settings, right? So you can you can do settings and you can get some help. There's your help uh, menu right there. Let's go through some of these blue bars. So this blue bar is your Office 365 menu, right? So here's your new mail, here's your Outlook, here's your calendar, so on. And that's available on your iPhone, your tablet, your daughter's computer, your husband's computer, your library, public computer. All this information is available wherever you can get online. This menu, this Office 365 menu, including all these tabs, which are the same as these menu items. I just opened up multiple tabs. So here's the news feed, right, which is basically your, your, your personal SharePoint site. Uh, and if you if you do flesh out the details about it, you can, you can put a blog in here. You can do your own identity. See that red bar? See, it's it's telling everyone who might visit my site that I'm online. Let's go. To, oops, I didn't want to. I've got a tab open for that. Let's go to the next tab. Okay, so now we're in a OneDrive folder. This is the, think of this the same way you would think of your folder your file manager on your computer, except that it's on a browser. See this? There's two folders here. One says IMI Biz Dev, the other one's shared with everyone. Okay, Business I'm gonna show you. Okay. You see that? Okay, now I'm gonna show you something different. This is my file manager on my computer, right? So you have favorites, library, computer. I don't know if you've seen this before. Maybe you yeah. Okay, so so these this is how uh, I've been organizing my files for 20 years on computers with this file manager. This is this is like a core Windows capability. <laughs> and what I'm doing is I'm showing you the different cloud services. Here's the OneDrive for a consumer right here, and here's OneDrive Pro or OneDrive for business. That's what they're calling it now, OneDrive for business. And these features two... Doug, do you get in OneDrive for business versus the free OneDrive for the consumer? What's the question again? What different things do you get with OneDrive for business versus OneDrive for the consumer? I'm going to show what you right now. What additional things does business get? Yep, I'm going to show or you tools or what functions. Okay. Yep. That's what we're going into right now. So I've showed you this one, OneDrive, right? So ev everything that was available on OneDrive in that Chrome browser is also here. So I went to public, I went to cloud, and those are those three folders that I was going through in detail with you after the uh, workshop event. This is the link that I sent to everyone, these capabilities, right? So the industry solutions, here's the industry solution. Here's the, here's the, um, the text file for legal that right. I'm showing you in the browser. This is showing you in the, in the folder. Now, do you have your, your file manager set up so you can have a window? You can do co copy and paste. You don't even have to open it up, open up the file. You can just, oh, I want to see that link that Doug was talking about, legal proposal. Okay, I can just copy can copy that link and then open up a browser, right? So so all okay. those, so those are the files that were in that subdirectory, and I'm looking at the same thing on the file manager as I was with the browser, okay? All right, so I'm gonna close. I'm gonna minimize that. Go back to here. Now we're so that was that was the uh, OneDrive from a file manager. Now we're back to a browser, and you can I can open up this uh, this shared with everyone folder. This is this is OneDrive for business. Notice there are some differences here. Um, for example, I'm gonna go to uh, let's see here uh, eBooks. Collection of Microsoft eBooks free. So I'm going to open up that menu and see this now. As, as I as I the ellipsis, if you right click on the ellipsis, 
you can get this capability. So I could share that folder right there with, with my client. Okay, I could I could share it a different way. All right, I could do, I could view the properties. I could set up a workflow. I could connect this folder to make a, a, a folder in Outlook. Right, and I can share it with a particular person there. I can delete it. Okay, I can open it. So let's go in there. I'm going to open this up. So that would be an example of giving access to the folder. You can give a particular person access to a particular folder, and they're going to have. You to know, I have. I have a situation yesterday where that you know, where we're still working on something for a client of mine, and they needed the legal definition. For example, we're setting up a blocked account in a probate matter, and because the financial guy doesn't understand the definition of what a blocked account is to figure out what account she needs to open to satisfy the court, she was looking for the legal definition to give the financial um, advisor so they could pick the right product for her to purchase to satisfy the judge. It would have been great for me to have some type of information so I could have just emailed it to them. Yep. And if it's so, a, if it's a common, I, I mean, I know that's the free e MS books, but I'm wondering if I could load even my own material into that. Yeah. Yes. So this uh, right now I'm showing you my OneDrive for business. Okay, whenever you see there, it says OneDrive Intentional Management. That's my OneDrive for Business account from this part of the menu. Okay, it's OneDrive. And these folders could correspond with your situation. You could have a folder for each client, right? A separate folder for each client. And then you could set up, um, I'm going to go into this one. You could set up, a sh you could share. Right now, it's shared with the whole internet, right? But right. I could sh I could restrict the sharing property and just share, and then I would just send an email to my client, put their email address right in there. And if they, if you don't want to let them edit, if you just want to let them view it, you can control whether they edit edit it or not. And then you you put a little short message with it, okay? So. Um, you, and then you can send, send them an email invitation that you shared that folder. You have a private folder, just you and your client. And it's, it's encrypted. It's, uh, it's got uh, uh, malware protection all in the background. It's got backed up. It's backed up. It's 99.9% .9 available uh, or money back guarantee. Microsoft has that with their Office 365. And so you can see who's who you're sharing with here, right? Okay. So let's go into this, let's go into this link folder, right? So, oh, there's no files in there. I'm gonna go back. So you gotta go back with this one, it's, you don't have that, oh yeah, you got the back, the cookies, the, the cookie crumb menus right here. So uh, let's see. Let, let's say you want to look at one of these documents, this Word document, but you don't want to open it up. You don't want to download the whole thing. You you right click on the ellipses, and you can get us. You can get a, a mini view of that Word document. It's a five page, right? You can download a copy, and you can embed it if you're doing web stuff, right? You can you can look at that. Um, you can see if that's the right document. Okay, so is, is this one the right one? So it's it's looking at the Word document, and it'll work for you know it'll work for all different kind of um, things. You can ex do a full screen. So I just j now I just opened up that thing in Word. Okay, so it just opened up a new tab right there in, in Word Online. Okay. Okay, so we're back here. All right, so it, will it work on PDFs? Okay, so you, uh, so if you wanted to set up PDFs, you can do the PDFs. 
you can load audio and video in here as well. So this is the, you know, the, here are, here is uh, different ways you can do the same things. Um, so that is OneDrive. This is, I think this is a uh, untapped resource tool that you have available for uh, controlling access uh, to your to your clients. You can set up, I think the easiest thing would be to just set up different folders, right? So you can do new, and then you can set up a folder right there. Boom. Okay. Right? You could, you could in a browser, you could just set up a Word document, and it would, and it would be stored in that folder, right? So um, how does that look? So this, rather than the traditional way where you save the Word document on your, on your laptop, in the future, you're going to save it to the cloud. And the reason why is because it's available on any computer. And you can now you can have multiple people editing the Word at the same time. And right now we're using the Word editor that's available through a browser. The one that's available through your desktop is more features, the, the menus and so on. There's a little there, but they're closing the gap. Microsoft has had this product for a few years now. It saves, notice, notice there's no save in here, only save as. And the reason is it automatically saves for you. You don't have to hit control S and save all the time because that's what's happening in the background. So uh, what else? So you can set up multiple sites, right? So I've got it. Uh, this was this is where we've been. It, it, the OneDrive site, I call it intentional management here. But you can have team sites. You can set up just a special place for you and Beta. That's called a team site. And you can also do a web page if you wanted to to do a web page. That's that that's also a capability. Would a team site for be, me and Beta be better than than putting it just in a in a in a, fol in a folder? Would, would that be the best way? That way it would be just between the two of us? Right. Team site. So that's what you would be doing is you'd be setting up a team site for, see it's under sites. You'd be set up, setting up a team site for you and Beta. So this, okay. this could be your works, your workshop. So here's an example of a, of a team site that I set up. I was working actually with Ignacio. Okay, so we had this team site. So it, you can do um, all different kind of things. All right. So this is a private workspace for me and Ignacio. And that's what I want. I want a private workspace for Vita and I. Yeah. So yeah. I should set up the team. Where you think on OneDrive or SharePoint or whatever you want to call it, how you think I should set up our proprietary documents is in a team site. Yep, exactly. And then the OneDrive would be uh, more of a semi-public place, right? Where you, so you could, if you wanted to share with, let's say you're doing uh, a workshop with me and with Steve Feldman and Paul Wildrick, we could do a, you know, a shared with everyone type of folder, right? Or use a OneDrive consumer. I would probably be more inclined to use a OneDrive consumer in that scenario because OneDrive consumer has got more, it's more open, less restrictive. OneDrive SharePoint, OneDrive for Business, that's more closed. That would be uh, uh, the appropriate platform for you and Beta. All right, so uh, that's that's the big distinction right there. Just just knowing that there's a OneDrive, and then there's a OneDrive for Business, and OneDrive for Business is you and Beta, and or any of your other coworkers, and OneDrive. For consumer is what you would leverage for the for the larger audience for the for the mainstream business opportunities, and so uh, that's what I was showing you here. This is the OneDrive for consumer, so it's 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 very similar, but there's more capabilities. You can still have groups and you know have PCs get access automatically. So these PCs have the direct link with Windows. Explorer, also known as File Manager. Okay, so you can render it different ways. If you want to make it look more, look more like File Manager on the OneDrive for consumer, you can, right? 
if you want to look at the look at the the properties and the permissions and the you know who's who all has access and what can they do with it um, that's available all that's uh, something that you can just use so that's the consumer and this is the commercial